Good afternoon everyone, it is David Schlothauer here keeping an eye on your weather forecast as we have a lot to talk about in this video for your Thursday afternoon as we are tracking another big severe weather event for the Deep South followed by a lot more heavy rain, strong winds, and stormy with serious flood concerns all the way across the west coast of California, Oregon, and Washington. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is the winter storm across the Rockies, the northern plains, with icy conditions likely, along to go with severe weather for the deep south, such as Louisiana, as well as Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, southern Missouri, southern Illinois, southern Indiana, and even eastern Texas and southeastern Oklahoma. This is a pretty big area of severe weather that we are really concerned about. So let's get right into it here. So this is a look at the European model for Monday morning, January the 2nd. So this is about four days out from right now. And we can see we do have a surface low that tries to develop here over western Texas. That is going to help increase lifting along the boundary and on the northern side where we have a lot of snowfall over the four corners. So that includes for Salt Lake City, that includes, again, for, say, portions there of Wyoming, as well as Colorado and Nebraska, some portions there of Arizona and New Mexico. Going to get some pretty wild weather with this winter storm that develops. All right, so going forward here, we can see that the system is going to really go or undergo some pretty serious changes here. We're talking about a severe weather episode for Monday afternoon here with freezing rain to the north of that and snowfall to the north of that so we have a neapolitan storm that's what i call them i don't know if you guys call them neapolitan storms because we're gonna have different flavors of precipitation we have rain freezing rain some sleet in the mix and some snowfall all right so that's what we have going on and then to the south again lots of discrete storms here that could start firing up by Monday morning, Monday afternoon. This could kick off a pretty big, substantial, severe weather event over the deep south. And so the all severe hazards are likely with this one, including large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes. And it wouldn't be enough to argue that we could even see um, maybe some strong tornadoes out of this. The dynamics are becoming a little bit more concerning than what we had yesterday. So this continues all the way to Monday night into Tuesday morning. Very dynamic setup. We got a warm front that is going to be draped across the upper Midwest with a cold front that is going to be arcing this um, in this favor across Louisiana, eastern Texas, across um, portions of the Ozarks into the Arkansas area. That is going to really develop this warm sector, and we're going to have some supercell potential with this. This continues all the way to Tuesday morning. Look at all that pink on your screen. That indicates a lot of freezing rain, lots of snowfall on the northern side of this. Very dynamic system, okay? Even so, it's not particularly strong like the last winter storm. That was Elliot that went over the Great Lakes. This one still looks dynamic in itself because we have a cold front we have a warm front we can see it here clearly on the precipitation forecast on the european model that kind of falls apart by the time we go into tuesday afternoon and then eventually by the time we go into thursday so we're looking at quite a bit here on the european model the gfs has a more northerly um uh, development of the surface low we can see that here so the surface low is way to the north here and with it well look at this Iowa is no longer in the chances of freezing rain so there's a lot of uncertainty here in the numerical forecast guidance with freezing rain still to the north but it's exactly where that happens and where the snow actually ends up being we also have a less discrete uh, mode development here uh, on the GFS model for Monday. More of a squall line-like event. So there is quite a bit of disagreement between the European model and the GFS model, which tends to be the case at about four to five days. That's why the Storm Prediction Center that I'm about to show you here is really not comfortable going for a 30% uh, a severe for day four or day five yet. Uh, they're, uh, or day five is slight now, but they're not comfortable yet of going 30 uh, for day five at this point. 
There's your warm front on the GFS model, and that continues to move out of the area by Tuesday afternoon uh, on Wednesday, perhaps, and then maybe another little piece of energy tries to eject into Oklahoma and northern Texas by Wednesday next week, on um, January the 4th. But as far as your New Year's Day forecast goes, looks pretty good. There's no concerns for anything. It's going to be mild. It's going to be warm for your New Year's celebrations, uh, for your New Year's Eve forecast as well. Looking good, but if you're back west, that could be a different story. So now, winds are going to be a big deal with this. Southerly winds at the surface, 20 to 30 miles an hour. When we take a look at the low-level wind profile dynamics here, we have southwesterly winds at about 5,000 feet above the surface, anywhere between 50 to 60 miles an hour. And on top of that, we have southwesterly winds aloft at about, say, 60 to 70 miles an hour. So we have some pretty substantial veer winds, especially low-level shear, that is going to be very strong, and that topped with instability that we have in place for this dynamical setup is going to lead, again, to severe weather, and that's what we have here. All this cape, all this energy, moisture evection, we have a lot of um, high moisture content. That's going to lead to the potential for severe weather across the Midwest and the Deep South on uh, Monday afternoon into t perhaps Tuesday. This could be a uh, kind of double-edged sword event here. Uh, Monday and Tuesday could be the active days here for the Deep South. Now, as far as your severe weather goes, let's go and take a look at the Storm Prediction Center. They're still maintaining the slight risk for severe weather across the Arklatex, Mislatex, that includes for northeastern Texas, eastern Oklahoma, Arkansas, northern Louisiana, northwestern Mississippi, western Tennessee, western Kentucky, southern Indiana, southern Illinois, and southeastern and southern Missouri at this given time. Really quickly, I did want to show you all how much snowfall could you actually see this with this winter storm that is going to be rolling through. And it looks like we are looking at quite a bit uh, for the middle of next week. In some areas, could see anywhere between about 6 to 12 inches of snow. Northern um, portion there of Iowa could see between 8 to 12 inches of snow. Now, it's saying 23 inches. We're going to see if that actually pans out. But right now, the European model is a little exaggerating on this winter storm, I strongly believe. On the freezing rain total, it is also looking quite significant here. Anywhere between about a half an inch to maybe an inch of freezing rain is certainly a possibility. So again, we really got to keep an eye on this very closely as that could really lead to a lot of power outages. So now that we talked about the severe weather and now we're going to kind of transition because I'm really concerned about how much rainfall is expected for the west folks and i rarely get concerned about this but we're gonna see just storm after storm after storm even the weather channels talking about it and some local news stations around our area are certainly even talking about it so this is definitely something you do not want to sleep upon if you're in the Sierra, this is also for you. There's going to be a lot of snowfall that is anticipated. So this is a look at the European model. And again, we're just going to kind of go through this pretty fast because there's really not any s s storm number that we're kind of, this is just going to be kind of an all-in-one deal. It's just going to be raining constantly. So uh, for Thursday, or for, yeah, for, um, for Thursday afternoon into Friday, First storm comes in, again, our, our, our impulse of moisture, moderate to heavy rainfall is anticipated on the European model over our area with high elevation snow. That's because of warm air advection is going to be um, developing out ahead of the cold front. And this is going to continue. Look at this rain. Going to be really coming down very hard for Friday, for Saturday. Thunderstorms, strong winds, going to definitely bring down trees and power lines, certainly across the area. A storm that we have not seen in quite some time, that's going to add just more onto the flood concerns that we are going to have to deal with. And this is going to continue. That storm moves out of our area by the time we go into late, late Saturday night into early Sunday morning. We're dry on Sunday, and then another storm, weaker it looks like based on the model guidance, but maybe some gusty winds along to go with that storm uh, for Monday next week. This is January the 3rd, so your New Year's Eve wet, New Year's Day dry and mild, maybe some breezy north winds, and then it looks like Monday is a stormy day perhaps, and then it looks like a bigger storm comes in 
perhaps even on Tuesday, even into Wednesday and Thursday. This one has my big concern. This one could actually have high wind warnings with it, could have the most rainfall and the heaviest snowfall for this year as we can see here. The dark blue on your screen indicates some very intense snowfall rates of maybe perhaps an inch or more an hour along to go with um, damaging wind gusts that are anticipated on the uh, European model. And that's the European model, folks. I'm not joking. It takes a lot for this to hype it up. And then another big storm comes in very strong. Strong winds, heavy rainfall, and heavy snowfall for the mountains of the Sierra. And then another big storm. It's just going to be constant, constant deal here. All the way through January the 8th, we could be looking at just storm after storm after storm. As soon as we get into Sunday night, it might not stop all the way into the following week. So we could be looking at 8 to 10 days of just constant, constant rainfall for our area. The GFS is also very similar, more bullish though, and there's some variability here. So the first storm again moves through. We saw that New Year's Day is dry. Another storm again on Monday, and then another storm tries to get in on here probably on Wednesday afternoon. There's again some timing issues on this with the GFS more later than the European model, but nevertheless, we're still looking at the same scenario here. Very strong storm, heavy snow, heavy rainfall, thunder, um, and again, damaging winds. And that there's more storms after that that, um, that hit California. It's just going to be constant. It's just not going to end at all. So again, I want to emphasize there is the potential for uh, significant flooding right now, perhaps throughout the next 10 days. And you'll see that on the Climate Prediction Center that I'm about to show you, which really emphasize that pretty well. So 10-day rainfall totals over Central and Northern California could range, again, this is the Euro model solution. Again, other models are going to have different outputs and different solutions and different what-ifs. But right now, the European model honing in at between 8 to 12 inches of rainfall for the Central Valley. We could see anywhere between 15 to 25 inches of rainfall for the Cedar Foothills and the mountains, including for the coastal ranges that could see as much as maybe perhaps 25 inches of rainfall in the next 10 days. That's very bad news. That's going to lead to a lot of flood problems. Um, we're dealing with too much rain already and we're just going to add more to it. Take a look at the snowfall forecast. This is absolutely significantly bad. Again, I'm not trying to hype up. Please quote, don't quote me on that. I would really appreciate that. But what I'm seeing is very concerning. And this is, again, coming from the European model that indicates that some of the Sierras here from, say, the Southern Sierra to the Northern Sierra could pick up over 30 feet of snowfall, maybe 40 feet of snowfall. That is 400 right here, 445 inches of snowfall on the GF or on the European model. And that is this area in particular. I mean, you guys could say, wow, all you want. I don't think it's going to happen. But based on the Euro model, that is very concerning. And it's been uptrending. The previous run, 412 inches. The previous run, 311 inches. So since yesterday, we have really gone up a lot as far as snowfall totals go. So this really is concerning for our area to see that much snowfall. That again is over perhaps 40 or 50 feet of snowfall in total. That is definitely going to lead to power outages, down trees, lots of problems on the roadways, and it's just not going to get any better. So here's a look at the Climate Prediction Center. As far as the amount of um, temperatures go, the chances well above average likely for the Midwest and for the Eastern Seaboard. There's been already a lot of people going around saying it's going to be pretty warm. And no joke, it is going to be really warm, especially if you're in the Great Lakes. You're going to have temperatures nearing the upper 50s to low 60s eventually by the middle to the end of next week. So it's going to be really warm for a lot of you if you're in the Midwest. Also, look at the rainfall chances across California, Nevada, and Oregon. We're looking at almost basically 90% chance of above normal precipitation for central and northern California. That is literally 
likely. That there's no chance we're going to see any below average. In fact, I, I did their interactive map. There's only a 2% chance there's going to be below average precipitation here in California with roughly about a 5 to 6% chance of normal precipitation. And then, of course, you see your 80 to 90% there of above normal chances. So very likely we're going to see flood problems, you bet, across Nevada, across California, across the eastern seaboard, likely or leaning above as far as precipitation goes. Temperatures definitely above normal for the Great Lakes, for the Deep South, for much of the nation, including for California we're going to have a little bit warmer than normal temperatures. And that's because, again, of atmospheric rivers that are going to evict a lot of warm air into our area. The 8 to 14 day outlook for precipitation, this is through mid-January. We're still looking pretty wet around here in California and Nevada through the foreseeable future. In fact, the GFS model keeps this amplified stormy, really stormy pattern in place, including the European ensemble and the GFS ensemble really honing in very stormy weather perhaps even into january the 15th or the 16th so we're just going to keep this going folks for the next two or three weeks we can be looking at some very stormy conditions around here so the risk of high winds is high moderate to or a slight to moderate risk for damaging winds across california oregon and washington with a possible threat for flooding that could be significant damaging winds heavy snowfall and heavy rainfall all from the 6th through the 9th. So for those three days, we're looking at a lot of problems, okay? Actually, actually four days, the 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th. That's four days of wicked weather here across the West. So I hope you guys are ready for this. And here's another uh, output of this. So this is a look at my forecast really quickly before we end this. Rain, rain, sunny. There's only one sunny day on there, perhaps. That's it. All of these other days, Rain, showers, strong winds, especially on Wednesday that we talked about. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited, but I hope you guys take this seriously because there will be flood problems. I'm very sure throughout most of next week. That's going to do with this forecast, everyone. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe. And also check out our Weather Force Discord server and my Twitter page. I will have more updates on this wicked weather pattern coming up in the next few days. Thank you all for watching.